Toronto, city of the rich, can you still afford it? Toronto is becoming so expensive. It's not just the condos and homes, it's everything. Today I'm gonna to show you how to deal with Toronto of the rich, how you can also still live here, buy here, rent here, work here. And I'm gonna show you some options, what to do if this is too expensive. Okay, friends, this is UNC Capital, Toronto Realtor and Mortgage Broker at Search Realty. Phenomenal, fantastic company, a Google partner company. And today we're going to talk about Toronto City of the Rich. The prices of real estate in Toronto and the Toronto real estate market has gone up so much. It's becoming unaffordable to so many. Is it unaffordable to you? Well, let's look at some options to make it affordable to you. And if it's not affordable to you, I want to show you some options where you can buy around Toronto, which is still quite affordable. Yossi Kaplan here. YossiKaplan.com, Twitter.com slash YossiKaplan. That's my Twitter. All the news, the fit to print, come here. Yesterday, I showed you how to make real estate money off Google and Shopify employees. That's pretty good. Uh, I post a lot of stuff here. 17 million, 13 million assignment. How to buy real estate with a partner. That's a hint. We'll get back to that later. How to flip houses. That's another option for you. And so on and so forth. Should I invest outside Toronto? These all questions are very, very important because as we see, Toronto is becoming a megalopolis. You know, it's getting projects across town. The Well Galleria Mall, which is a contained villages, if you like, if you will, a vertical villages, but it's all expensive. It's very expensive. Toronto is very expensive. Um, you go here, urbanrealtytoronto.com. That's my main site where I show you how to buy, how to sell, where to invest, what to avoid, sample listings, how to find assignments, on and on and on. Uh, fashion House Condos Toronto, fashionhousecondostoronto.com, a website I'm uh, completing for Fashion House, which will give you the affordability and what's available and not in Fashion House, plus some general information. Um, here, this is the historic statistics, the MLS, and what you can see is Toronto is becoming a city of the rich. You need $800,000 to get into an average place here, and that's the GTA. That's not downtown Toronto, that's not the 416, that's 416, 905 combined. It's crazy, my friends, okay? Um, YouTube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. you find all the videos. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing. Please keep it coming. Um, I'm gonna jump right into it now. I'm gonna show you some articles I was looking at in the half post. You click on the business section, you click on the real estate. <clears throat> okay, you get to this page. And some of these articles are really amazing because they give us clues to where things are going and at least where the media wants us to think they're going, okay? So uh, here, Canadians have never spent so much of their income paying off debt, okay? But households know they're at risk and are racing to pay the money back. So this is actually a great title and subtitle. What it basically tells you is there's so much debt here because the prices are so high that the mortgages are just massive. Uh, now, are there subprime mortgages? No, there are not. You know, we have stress tests here. You gotta put 20% minimum. Uh, as a mortgage broker, I can tell you that you're not gonna get a mortgage unless you can afford it. If you can't afford it, you're just not going to get it. Uh, there's an in-between. There's an A lender, which is your typical bank, you know, TD, CIBC, Royal Bank, uh, whatever. Uh, those will give you the regular mortgages, which is the best rates, but you have to have good income, you have to have good credit, and you have to show that you can support whatever you're taking. Now, if you're not in that category, we can place you in a B, uh, B style mortgage, which means it's a little bit more expensive because you're a little higher risk, uh, but you can still buy it, assume the property, and then enjoy the appreciation. Uh, which has been uh, a good option for many, many people. Now, you know, a lot of people argue this bank give you another 0.1%, what At some point, that 0.1% is going to dwarf by the amount of money you make on appreciation. So you can, you can get the property now or you can wait, 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 like a lot of people do. And in my opinion, these days is a mistake because you cannot accumulate money as fast as inflation goes. Inflation is built into our economy. Uh, our government is spending too much and maybe in the wrong places. They're printing too much money. Uh, we actually have to buy our own money from another bank, which is a private company called the Federal Reserve. You know, that's in the States, but it's more or less the same system all over the world, except for just a few handful of countries. So we have to pay them for our dollars, and then they charge our interest on our money. It's ridiculous, but that's how the system works. <coughs> in order that everyone's making more and more money, we inflate the money. We we put more money into the system and then it causes everything to go up because, you know, I used to buy this cup of coffee here for a dollar, but now I have to pay two dollars for it, but it's the same coffee. So I mean, the dollar's worth half. And when you look at the value of money, it's reversed. The value of money goes down and down and down. So something has to come up to balance it. And real estate is the number one tool to use to hedge, to protect yourself against that thing. And that's the major, the major problem here. 
okay, well, of course, we have immigration, we have people coming to the, to the country, to the city, and, you know, Canadian immigration, uh, with the exception of refugees, is very rich. Most Canadians are uh, immigrants that come here. Not me, I came as a student, I had nothing, just a backpack. But most people that come, you know, they're already established and they have to show some uh, money in the bank account and then they come to buy properties. And because Canadian dollars are so low and so cheap, they can buy more and it causes them more and more of, of appreciation of values, which is great if you bought, but it's not great if you haven't. And that's the problem. Toronto is rich, okay? So now the price is going up and we have to pay more and more money in order to get the same stuff. That's ridiculous, okay? So leading to the highest debt service burden on records. There you go. Don mortgage capital payment, non mortgage interest payment, mortgage. So what this shows you also, it shows you that people basically are just paying the interest on the mortgage and they're not actually paying the mortgage itself. That means they're not paying into the capital. Now, you know, <laughs> one person will say it's really good, one person will say it's really bad. So I'll quickly explain this, what it means. It means let's say you bought the condo for 600, you put uh, 150 down, quarter of it and then the 450 the three quarters left you're gonna get a mortgage but you, you chose an uh, interest only mortgage or a high interest mortgage it means that less capital more interest at least in the first years it used to be the first seven years but I'll, I'll, if you want I can check it for you on the computer how long it takes to actually get to the equilibrium point and then what happens is basically you're not paying into your own place it's kind of renting from the bank you know you put 25 percent or 20 percent down or whatever it is the bank gives you the 80, the 75, the rest, and then you just keep paying the bank or the lender um, back. You pay them back the interest only, but you're not paying into your own place. So when you come to sell it, you haven't really paid for it. But if it appreciated, because we're all banking on appreciation, because it, you know, like here it's going up. So the, so you bought that condo for 600, but you sold it for seven, so you have 100 in gross profit there. So you really, you did this deal with the bank or your partners with the bank. Uh, you put 20 to 25 percent, banks uh, completed the 80 75 percent, and then you just bank on appreciation. Okay, let's look a little more in depth in this. And I'm gonna, and after right after this, I'm gonna tell you what you can do and how you can still buy something in Toronto, outside of Toronto, and also gonna give some advice for renters. Okay, for young renters, if you're watching this, the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some advice of what to do, how to become from a renter to owner, and also I'm gonna show you how to find cheaper rentals. Okay, because that's really, really a problem. Uh, right now, all my friends are renting, are just struggling. All my friends that are owners are struggling. Everyone that I know is struggling. So I'm going to try to make some points here that relieve the struggle and give you a good direction where to go. Okay? Um, let's, a, a couple more from the half post. Kind of the first time home buyer incentive could backfire. So <clears throat> this, there's a plan here, which is a pre-election plan. I don't know if it's real, if it's actually going to happen, but he said it's going to happen in September. And basically, the government of Canada is going to invest with you. It's going to be a partner. It's going to invest up to, uh, it says, 5 or 10%. Uh, CMHC, which is a, a government body that insures your mortgages, will buy up to 5% of existing home or 10% of a newly built home. So basically, if you buy a new construction, they're going to give you 10% uh, to invest with you, which is, which is kind of cool, or 5% if it's existing. Now, here's the thing. Uh, to give you an example here. So it'll be linked to the house value. So if uh, they give you 25,000 to a $400,000 home and the value uh, went up by 20%, so they, when you sell it, they're gonna take 20% more, so it comes to 31 to 50. Um, if you know the house went from 400 to five, but if uh, the house falls by 20%, they're gonna get short and only get 20, okay? Now, what money is this? This is your money, my friends. This is your tax money. This is the money you're paying for real estate, for everything that the government collects and then it wants to use. Now, is this the best thing for Canadians to do? I don't know. My first my first thinking is no, it's not the best thing. I mean, I can see how it can be really, really helpful. You know, you want to buy a place. Obviously, it also limits you, by the way. It says below uh, that it limits the up to 600,000, so five to six, which is, which is common, which is cool. Um, but then they say, you know, but the average house is 830, 838 now, and looking here in my stats at 787 that was 2018 so no no we only six the end of the six months of 2019 and already we're at you know almost 10 percent over what we were last year the appreciation here is crazy toronto is becoming city of the rich you know there's no other way i can tell you this i'm gonna go back to this article it's very interesting but what happens here is basically here's um just go to the half post punch this in you'll find it 
So what happens if you you're looking for a condo that is uh, you know worth five or six hundred in Toronto, outside of Toronto, and I'll show you in a minute once I review these articles how to find them. I have the links open already. Um, they're going to invest. The government's going to invest with you with your money. So it's your money that you gave the government, and they're going to give you back the money. And then if you made any money, you're going to take back. And if you lost some, then it's their loss. But really, it's your loss because it was your money from the beginning. Okay. So that's the problem I have with this. The second is, is it really best to like give money to the people that have money? Maybe we should build more rentals. Maybe we should build more affordable housing. I don't know. There's a lot of options there. And when you introduce the kinds of option, I want to see the options. Well, what about the people, my friends and your friends that are not in position to buy for whatever reason? What are the people that can only afford 300? Okay. And they want to, and you can still find a lot of stuff for 300 in Ontario. Okay. I mean, you'll have to go real up north, like eight hours north, to buy something for 100000 But for 300 you can still find, along the, Q, the, the, the QEW, you can f still find stuff towards Brantford, Hamilton, St. Catharines, uh, Port Erie. Those are the places you can still find reasonable housing, okay? Um, so I'm not sure this is the best way. I'm not sure if it's like, a, like, like would work. Uh, Apparently in the UK it uh, backfired. Imagine if the real estate uh, numbers go down, everyone's losing. And if it goes up, who's really winning here? And whose money was it? And it is the best and highest use of taxpayer money. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a government bureaucrat, I'm a business person, I'm an entrepreneur. And my job is to find you the best deals and show you the best deals because what I find is a lot of people, the call some investors, they make terrible decisions and they do not invest in the best where they could have, should have invested. I get calls all day long. Should I buy there? Should I buy there? I go, you're looking at B and C locations. Yes, you're getting a bit of discount, but for that discount, it's like not, it's like <laughs> my grandmother used to say, like, you can't be half pregnant. You're in or you're out. It doesn't work like that. So you either buy in Toronto where, like, you know, it's crazy, or you go outside enough that the price drops enough that your ROI equalizes. Um, but a lot of these, you know, B locations, I don't like them. I like either it's like all I, all way, you know, like give me the center of Toronto or maybe let's go to Hamilton. But sometimes in, in the peripheries, it's very, very dangerous. Watch out for that. Uh, this is another thing that will show you what's going on. Toronto is the fastest growing city in U.S. and Canada, and that's not good. Well, that's judgment. Let's ignore the judgment and let's look at the facts. Toronto is the fastest growing city in U.S. and Canada, okay? This is it. Now, um, there's Phoenix, Arizona. I've driven through Phoenix a couple of times. I had great tacos there, nice city. And I know Toronto developers building in Phoenix because it is one of the largest metros uh, growing in the US, maybe the fastest one according to this one. Um, it is the sixth largest metro in size in the US, so it's quite large, but not as large as Toronto. But still, it's Phoenix, you know? So Toronto is beating everyone. But remember, Toronto is cheap. It's cheap because one dollar uh, US buys you one dollars and thirty four cents Canadian, so what so a third more. So if you were to buy a, a three hundred thousand dollar home in Phoenix, you know, or you have three hundred thousand dollar US, that's really four hundred, another third, four hundred Canadian. So if you come from another country, whether it's India, China, uh, which most of the immigrants come here, or maybe you come from the US or Russia or Europe or Middle East. Uh, where I came from, or Africa, or wherever, you know, you're doing business in US dollars. The whole world is still dealing with US dollars. It's still there. So you, or whatever currency local you have, you have your Chinese currency, or Russian currency, or European currency, whatever it is, you buy US dollars because you still good value. You come to Canada and you're getting 34% discount, okay? So that's a problem. That pushes the prices up. For us locals, there's nothing we can do about it because we make Canadian dollars, we pay Canadian taxes, <laughs> and we can't really leverage that. So that's, you know, like there's influx of, of money, of rich money coming. So Toronto is becoming rich uh, for many reasons. And one of the reasons is that foreign money coming here just buys a lot. You know, their gold is shinier, better, and it's a third more valuable than our gold, dollar gold, okay? So I'll put, I'm going to copy all these links, cut and paste into the comments so you can review uh, for yourself, okay? But, you know, the, 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 on, the only thing you can do here, really, is you got to build enough to equalize the supply with the demand. The more you build 
and the more you announce your bill, the more expectation there is for prices to level. So that's how it's going to work. And some article, I forget if it's here or another, I saw um, 77,000 people coming to Toronto every year. I think it's a lot more. I think it's double that, okay? We can only produce about 20,000 condos. An average condo, you know, it's a one or a two bedroom. So even if it's 1.5 people per condo, it's only 30,000 beds. But I need 100,000 beds a year, so I'm 70,000 beds short. If I need 150,000 beds, I'm 120,000 beds short. So it's becoming more expensive because I can call any number I want and I'm gonna get the rent, I'm gonna get the price. And really, my advice to sellers these days is if your price is readable, it will take you longer to sell, but hold your ground if you can because there's nothing else. And I see it in, you know, you're gonna see that the days on market, D-O-M, days on market, how long a listing has been listed, is gonna get longer. That's natural because the price is so high and there are less people that can buy it. So your listing has to be remarkable, really good. You're competing on a higher bracket market, you know, you're starting to compete. If, you, if your two bedroom average $800,000 condo doesn't look really good, you may wanna renovate it. And as you know, we renovate, and we've been renovating a lot older units um, to bring them up to date, to bring them up to par. And also I'm gonna show you that resale has become again cheaper, the new construction, so resale has a resurgence. And you'll see more resale being renovated. Call me if you need renovation. And, and that's, that's what's happening. So Toronto is the fastest growing, okay, I showed you that. Navigating loneliness is our, even though we're more connected. Now this is not necessarily real estate, but I, 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 I posted it up because we're moving also into a society where it's, it's individualized, it's disconnected. It's not connected because I have a phone, I can send it, it's actually disconnected. You know, we sit, each sit in one by one little uh, cubicles in the office, or I sit by myself at the coffee shop, you know, um, I eat at dinner, lunch, whatever, at home, and it's by yourself, by yourself, by yourself, so you see a lot of these little uh, units, um, as investors, you have to understand how you can make advantage of that, okay? What's happening here? So it's not just an economical thing, it's a social thing too. Um, we need to make friends, we need to make these condos more connected and more social. And that's why I like large projects like The Well, like Crosstown, like Galleria Mall, because these are communities, okay? Okay, this is really, really important. New condos are way more expensive than resale and now they're risky too. Okay, so Daniel Tenser has been providing excellent, excellent uh, information recently. I've been really enjoying his writing and everything he's, pu he's putting up, and I highly recommend you read it. Now, read everything with a grain of salt. Obviously, you know, we all individuals here, we all have our, our um, opinions and angles, but nonetheless, this is fantastic. This guy is putting great information. I do not know him personally. I've never met him. I'm, it's not an endorsement. It's like good content I see online. That's why I show it to you, okay? Um, so Daniel here writes um, that what's going on is basically the resale price is, is now more affordable than the available price. And he goes into a lot of detail and I, I highly recommend you read it. Uh, but I've recently spoke about this, that uh, in here, according to Urban Nation, New Cloud Toro, Casa Rosa 779, so 780 per foot in the first quarter of the year, having searched on 50% since uh, 2016. Meanwhile, a resale condo cost 683. Okay, so the new condos are 14% more expensive. Now, let me put these numbers into, now this is, this is the average, but we live in Toronto, you know, where are we here? I don't know, maybe it's east of Young. I can't really tell from here. If you know, let me know. Maybe it's not east of Young. I, I don't know where we are. But anyway, uh, oh, it says here, Vancouver. Oh, it's Vancouver, it's not even Toronto. Okay, that's fine. Um, What what happens here is in, in Toronto is like it's like night and day. You can still find like here at King West where I sit, uh, resale condos for eight hundred dollars a foot for the large ones and a thousand dollars a foot for the smaller ones. But new construction, if you're gonna come and buy anything new here, you're looking at fourteen hundred a foot if you can find anything. Uh, B I G Bjork Ingles uh, King West, fifteen hundred to two thousand a foot. I'm not kidding you. There's only one building left out of the four. They sold everything they put out. Um, anything new that comes, uh, we just did a couple of deals at West Con, there's a 1200 foot. I thought it was like the best deal ever, beautiful unit. Uh, I love everything that Aspen is doing. Uh, 
I, I've, I've worked a lot with Aspen. You know, if, if you like a quality product, give me a shot. I'll tell you about it. But it is more expensive than, and that's the cheapest one I found, and also the highest quality I was able to find, so, which is great for our buyers, uh, than anything resale. So you can still find resale for a thousand a foot. Okay, so of course with resale, it's not an immediate flip, but still it's going up by 10% a year. That means that this time next year, the resale was a thousand foot, it's going to be 11. Or maybe 12 if it's a small unit. So you're looking at the 500 square feet units, uh, getting up to the $600,000 range. Two years ago, across here to Thompson, we did a deal at uh, around the 450 or 460,000 for a one bedroom. That one bedroom, you know, by next year, I expect it to be close to 600,000. So that's 150,000. Even if it took three years, oh my God, that's 30% appreciation in three years. That's 10% every single year. That owner that worked with me made $50,000 appreciation every single year. And let's say they put the $100,000 down, the mortgage to fifty. Now they have a place that was six hundred. Let's say sold for six hundred. Their 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 gross uh, uh, gain here is two is is uh, two fifty. And they also put the hundred or ninety before, you know, uh, one fifty plus a hundred two fifty. So, you know, they come out of the deal with two fifty gross plus somebody paid everything for them plus whatever was put the capital into the mortgage uh to the capital not interest only but with capital so maybe like say 500 a month times three years it's also significant it's another 15 or twenty thousand dollars so it adds up it adds up but what happens at the time there was a high priced unit but according to our calculations and our understanding of the market it was still reasonable to go and we did the deal and Obviously, many deals ever since then, but it worked well. Okay, so let me keep going here. Can you house prices forecast what the next five years will look like in 33 cities? Daniel Tenter, good job, buddy. Don't know you, but great work. Uh, okay, uh, St. John's, small town. So when you when you look at, at little places with low price, they have the ability to appreciate fast. So Brantford, you know, I've been focusing on Brantford, Hamilton, Gulf Kitchen, and Waterloo. St. Catharines, Fort Erie, all, all, all these places. Um, St. John's, Guelph, Barrie, you know, these are places that are relatively still inexpensive. So if I come from Toronto, I go, oh man, I can sell my 600 square feet in Toronto for $600,000 and take home $20,000 as my deposit and I can go and buy myself a $600,000 place in any of these other places. I get a lot more house for I just sold an 800 square foot condo at King West, and I got 600 for it, or maybe it was it was 600 sorry 600 square feet condo at King West for 600, not unreasonable, maybe even more, and then I can go and buy a whole house for that outside of Toronto. Okay, so because it's cheaper, so this place will go up more. Now I do not agree with Toronto will go up by 3.3 percent. It's gonna go up by 10 to 20 percent. Okay, the downtown core is not gonna stop. Toronto is city of the rich. It's becoming more and more expensive. Here is the here is the cover for this video. Toronto city of the rich. That's what's happening. It's going to be city of the rich. It's not going to go by 3.3%. It's going to go by a lot more. At least 10, in my opinion, probably 15. We've probably already seen 8% appreciation this year. And if nothing crazy is happening, if you know there's no shock to the system, um, it's just going to keep going like that. And when it's going to stop, it's going to stop when people say, I can't do this anymore, and there'll be people on the streets. Now, Canada is very quiet, you know, lots of immigrants. None of us immigrants are going to go on the street and start. It's just not going to happen. So the pri we don't do that. So the price is going to go up, and people are going to pay more, but what are you going to do when you run out of money and you can't buy anymore, you can't rent? Okay, I'm getting to this. So uh, Toronto, Vancouver condos, now only for top earners. Okay, Daniel Tenser. So, and, and all these articles came the last couple months. So, you have to be the top earner to afford this stuff here. You know, you cannot pay $800,000 and that's average if you're not making crazy money. Yesterday, I showed you a video how to make money off the rich. Eat the rich, you know, that's kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, where is it? Let me show you. Let me open here a tab. YouTube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. And this is yesterday's video, how to make 
money off the rich. That's exactly what he means. And and uh, how to make money off, uh, how to make real estate money off Google and Shopify employees. And why? Because they are the top earners. These guys are making a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year, and they actually fit exactly the top earners. These are the top earners. So that's as investors, that's our target market. Where did that video go? That's our target market. The top earners. I lost it. Let's go back. So once again, you find the top earners, you find where they work. The video tells you exactly where, where the offices are. I'll go back to this video. And once you do that, you buy the properties that they would like to rent from you at those areas okay that's how you do it and here I show you this is the office that's what they look like and you buy them a place that looks like a loft because that's what they like that's really cool this place by the way this specific place sold uh, for just over 500 which is crazy it's, it's very very good uh, 550 for it now maybe even 588 for that building here is West Condos that are, that are mentioned to you. So these are options for you how to buy price reduction, okay? So these are options for you to buy and hold and rent to the rich engineers that work at Google, Shopify, and so on. Now I'm going into some solutions, okay? So one of the solutions is the video called No One Tells You This, and it basically explains to you what's going on in the market, why is the market going up, and what you can do about it, okay? And I give you options. I give you options to buy. So let's talk about options for buyers, and I'm going to talk about options about to renters. Okay. So one of the options for buyers here is to invest in in um, places which will yield high returns. So what will yield high returns? It's small bedrooms on a smaller scale, like smaller size. It's higher ROI per bedroom. Or you can go and invest in Guelph, in Kitchener, in Waterloo, in university towns. Some of these deals have one, three, or five uh, rental income. Uh, we have a deal at Niagara. This shows you how the money degrades. We have deals at Niagara. The Niagara, um, you can get rental income. So these are ways to beat, to beat the problem. The other way to do it, and that's renters. You too, is how to buy real estate with a partner. So when you're a renter, you know, when I, when I was renting and I was a student, I would have a roommate, one or two usually. So we get the place and then everyone puts a bit of money down and how to buy real estate with a partner is similar. We all come together and buy this property and then we use this as a jump board, as a jump start to go and buy other properties to make the enough profit, enough cash flow so then we can flip it or rent it to the Google and Shopify engineers and then use them to pay our mortgages and use them to basically jump start our investments. Okay, so roommates for the renters Renters, you're gonna find really good roommate deal, and and buyers, you're gonna if you cannot buy it by yourself, buy with a partner. If you cannot buy it with yourself or by a partner, buy outside of Toronto. Okay, so another option for you. This is the outside of Toronto, right? No, this is okay. I'll go to the flip and I'll show you how to buy out. So how to flip houses? Okay, in this video, I showed you how to flip houses. There's a house on the market right now. I think it's getting offers. Uh, he was asking for offers this weekend. I don't know what's going to happen, obviously, with it. Uh, but this is the house here, and it's listed. It's still available, I believe, for five ninety nine nine, and it's a decrepit house. You got a completely gut, and this got a lot of attention because this, uh, you know, in my opinion, probably will sell a similar one. So for about seven hundred, and let's say you need another one fifty or two. Let's say let's call it nine hundred thousand. You get yourself a nice home with an addition. And currently it has three bedrooms, but if you added two bedrooms or three bedrooms, you're making it a five bedroom, you're looking at maybe five thousand dollars a month cash flow. Okay, that's not bad. And in the video, I go into detail explaining um, how much cash flow you need, how the numbers work, and what you can do about it. So, you know, you can get together a few people, put all the money you need together, and then go and buy a flip, do the flip, <clears throat> make your money, split it back. You know, I put twenty uh, percent, and she put thirty percent, he put fifty percent. So then the cash flows come 20, 30, and 50, or whatever we agree on, and then when we sell it 23 or 50, kind of like the government buys with you, but I'd rather buy with someone I trust, not the government. Okay, but hey, it could be a good option too. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you. Partner, flipping. I want to show you how to buy outside of Toronto because that is a very good strategy, how to buy outside of Toronto. <laughs> 
that is a very good strategy because you can still find units for three and four hundred. As a matter of fact, we're gonna have we're gonna have some announcement coming in the next few weeks about options to buy, which are you can get a condo for three hundred. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. That means that even if you just throw some money with a friend, you know, you put thirty thousand, they put thirty thousand, you got yourself a condo, you got yourself a foot in the door, <clears throat> and that's called how to buy outside of Toronto. How should I invest outside of Toronto? It's this video here. Okay, so should I invest outside of Toronto? Explains to you what areas are available outside of Toronto and how you can actually leverage what you have. Or if you don't have enough to buy here, you could buy some, some, somewhere else. And why is that important? That's important because if you cannot do Toronto, at least you ride the wave elsewhere. And anywhere from here to the US border is fantastic because there's so much traffic, there's economy, there's growth, there's life energy, a lot of life energy ride that wave okay you got to develop this positive mindset to say i'm going to do this i'm going to do it so if you go i want to show you something a couple more tricks a couple of tricks and i'm done so if you go to uh, urbanrealtytoronto.com my main website and then you scroll to the bottom i prepared here these are by the way some links these are links to other websites articles that i've written uh, and here you can start looking at what's available. So this will take your listings. You want to see what's on King West? Just hit that link here, and I'll show you exactly what's available King West. It's already sorted for you, so you can start looking and studying the market. If you like anything, just hit me up, and I'll show you. So here's, for example, okay, I'm not logged in. I'll just use this page for now. Okay, but this is 111 Bathurst right above me, and it's a high floor unit, one bedroom, 518. That's pretty good. Okay, <coughs> anything I can find one bedroom in the 500 range now, King West, it's still good because it still reflects about a thousand dollar a foot. And remember, if I had to buy this unit from a developer um, anywhere else, I'm paying about 1400 in this area. If I buy in a rush, if I can find anything. I think they're sold out, or maybe 543 if they have anything left, it's a large building. Or um, if I'm looking into uh, BIG, Bjork Ingalls, for that 600 square feet, I'm paying close to a million dollars. Okay, so let's say this is a, I'll just assume it's like a, say a 500 or 600 square feet for 518,000. You know, if the unit is all good and everything is cool and it's a nice building, you know, you can expect rent of about $2,300, 2400 a month. So if you're a renter, you got to make the money. Hustle up, my friends. Or, you know, rough it up. Live with a friend. That's okay. I've done it for many, many years. I roughed it up. I live with a friend. I have three jobs. I had a 9 to 5 job. Then I have a Monday to Friday after. I would service people's computers and do computer stuff. And the weekends, I worked in real estate to study real estate. That's what I did. I hustled hard. I didn't stop for years. I had three jobs. I kept going. I also went out, you know, like had a good life. Everything is okay. You can do this. You got to hustle. That's part of the game, and that's okay. Um, but if you can find anything like this, and there are deals like that, then that's how you find them, okay? That's how you find them, and that's how you do. Uh, two bedroom, one bath, four ninety nine, and all the building down the corner here. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, Fifty five Stewart. That's the Thompson. That's a studio for five thirty five. Okay, on and on and on. 111 Bathurst, there's larger units here. You see, they're going 1.15 million, which is more or less the average now for a thousand square feet. Now, that's a quarter unit. That's also a really good investment because that reflects a very good value here. Okay, so this is how you can find um, the other links here. Uh, most expensive is kind of fun to look just for kicks. I'll show you. And it basically sorts stuff, start with the highest price. It, there are some filters and limitations. Um, you can also sort or you can reset the filters Okay, and then of course you get more and then I'm going to sort by highest price If you want to see it just for fun. So here's a 49 million dollar Okay, and the less I remove the filters the more options I get obviously Okay, uh, if you want to see reduce what's been reduced recently you can do that too and you can do rentals on the system too You'll see that searchrealty.co. It's going to ask you to register at some point. Price reduction, it's right here. And it's going to basically tag the, the, anything that a system recognizes that had a price reduction. Now, if I want to focus on a certain area, let's say Hamilton, I go to Hamilton here. I choose the city of Hamilton. 
Minimum price, 100. I'll say 200 because I don't want to see anything that is you know, decrepit or a garage. Oh, I'm missing a zero here. Search. And I need to sort now by lowest price. So there you go. So now you start to see units being uh, reduced in price in the 200s. Okay, that's how you do it. And now you start searching and then you go and with your partner, you start looking, can I buy this? Does it make good sense? Now, I may not be able to sell you the listing in Hamilton, but I will refer you to some of the best people in Hamilton, realtors, that can help you. Okay, and I will follow up with them and say, hey, how's it going with George? How's it going with Lucy? You know, and, and that's what we're going to do. And if you want to try another place, you just enter the, uh, whatever you want to try here, and you can see. And you can try it for Toronto. So I'm just going to remove the Hamilton tag here. Now we just everything in the system over two. So it's, you know, it's coming with everything because it's Innisfil, out of area, Sus, the Sioux, that's Oro Medante. That's kind of a nice place. Okay, but Toronto. So here's Toronto, Ontario. Show me at least one bed. Show me at least one bath. Over 200 search. And what do you know? It does come out. There's actually two units available under two. And of course, we jump to the threes. Okay. But that's okay. Now, this is not going to be the main, main areas. But must buy one bedroom and then. Okay. So maybe that's probably an assignment here. But you can start seeing stuff here that maybe there's something for you there okay uh, let's see what's assignments in the system so these are not all the assignments there's only assignments in the system a lot of them taken and developers say hey you're not allowed to post it they take them down so I'm only gonna show but if you want to see what went taken down you can email me and I can pull out everything that was taken down um, you cannot do it from this system it's because of the trip rules and regulations I have to email it to you which I will there's no cost or anything of course uh, but you can see here this is uh, King Blue, two bath, two bath, 849. Nice split design, okay? Corner unit, ah, not bad. 29th floor, there's Noble, 1.25. There's uh, one Yorkville, 25. 879 for two bath, two bath in Yorkville, not bad. That's Kingly right behind me. This is the Shopify, my friends. This is the building where uh, Shopify and Indigo moved in. I think I just have a condo here. Maybe we can negotiate the price a little bit and then basically find that one of the engineers there, like I told you in, in the video from yesterday, and they're going to rent it from you and charge them 2500 And they'll do it because they're in their own buildings. Go downstairs, switch elevator, go back to work. That's all they want to do, okay? And if you needed another tenant, it literally takes days to find another good tenant because this is where they are. So, yes, you're going to pay a little bit more for the good locations, but then you're also going to get the best tenant. So, it's a give and take. The moment you're buying cheaper, you're going with a, a population that average makes less, then you gotta adjust, you gotta look at the RI and make sure that you're balanced, okay? And if you wanna know how to do it, send me a line, I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through it. Last night, 9 p.m., I talked to uh, this person that I know, investor that I know, and we discussed whether um, they should invest just outside of Toronto, what's the dollar per foot is, can we get a cash flow, does it make any sense, on and on and on. <clears throat> It's a very good conversation, actually. Okay, here's a 1630, 1630 Queen East. So that's a new building, almost a million dollars. <clears throat> Assignments. So you can find a lot of stuff. So I want to summarize this. Okay, Toronto has become city of the rich. Uh, it's very expensive to live here. It's almost unaffordable to many, but there are, there are ways you can do it. You can find assignments, you can find deals, you can find reduced, you can buy with a partner, okay? But if you don't get into the market now, in Toronto, you can get to the market elsewhere. You can buy outside of Toronto, which maybe is uh, the thing to do. Or if you buy in Toronto, buy where the people are. So, you know, I, come to me if you, if you want to um, Shopify, the 250,000 square feet uh, office at the well. Also next door, there's a large tower building. You can buy right in there. That makes sense. Okay. Kingly up here. Uh, also, another Shopify office. This is the search, yossi.searchrealty.co, when you can go like fast searches and then modify them. These are the news article under Huffington Post shows you the, you know, Daniel Tenser show you the price are coming up and I explained why because of the built-in economy, <coughs> the built-in inflation. 
And finally, that's built-in inflation right here. These are the reports. And right here, these are the videos that will help you understand how to buy with a partner, how to buy out of, outside of Toronto, or how to buy a decrepit home that needs renovation. This is a really good example of one, and you can probably make really good money on them, okay? So Toronto is a city of the rich, but you can do it. You gotta focus, you gotta do the work, you gotta do everything that it takes. It's not easy anymore, but it's fun, it's possible. And at this point, you know, if you can buy Toronto, I would say buy Toronto, but only buy good Toronto that you know you're going to have enough volume, enough movement, enough life energy that can help you do this. And if you don't, let's look perimeter outside of Toronto and see what's available. And my focus is west of here between Toronto and the U.S. border because a lot of trade going on, a lot of traffic going on, you know, trucks, employees, people, knowledge, it just... It's just massive. 80% of all that we make in Canada goes down to the States. It needs a lot of service. All these goods and all this traffic needs a lot of service. And, of course, we have the knowledge, the gnosis of all the people that work on computers all day. And they also need a good place to live. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. I thank you and I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And that's it for today.